Hi, good morning. So what's the time? Around 11? <laughs> right. So we continue our journey with the 2021 January maths paper. This is a beautiful question on speed time graphs. That's on the screen there. And in this question, the speed time graph was drawn. Now, there are two types of motion graphs that CXC brings. One is distance time graph and the other is speed time graphs. And there are some things that you need to know every time you see a distance time graph and some things that you need to know every time you see a speed time graph. So in this question, this is part C of question eight. So Ali algebra, 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 relations, functions, and graphs. So let's just jump into it. Monty is cycling at 12 meters per second, m slash s. After 4.5 seconds, he starts to decelerate. And after a further 2.5 seconds, he stops. So this is going through what is happening on the graph. 12 meters per second. After 4.5 seconds, he starts to decelerate. And after a further 2.5 seconds, he stops. The speed time graph is shown below. So we want to calculate the constant deceleration. So the deceleration happened during this segment of the graph here. During this segment of the graph, we had a, a deceleration taking place. Let's get, he's getting slower. The deceleration is like the opposite of acceleration, but you can see it's a form of acceleration. It's just acceleration with a negative value on it. It's acceleration in the opposite direction. So how do we find acceleration, deceleration on a speed time graph? Anyone in the chat can tell me. And Raul is saying it's the gradient of the line. And that's correct. We use the gradient of the line. So we can use two points on the line. And the best two points I'm seeing to use are this one and this one up there. What's the value of this point? It's 4.5 and 12. That's the, that's the coordinates of the point. And the coordinates of this is 7, 0. So what this gradient is going to do is make us put a speed over time. And those of you all who in physics know velocity over time is acceleration. Change in velocity over time is acceleration. So the change in speed, change in the speed here over time will give us the acceleration. Or for those who just know maths, your teacher was supposed to tell you the gradient of the line in a speed time graph is acceleration. So we're supposed to see something negative here. Now, we wouldn't use the negative value because they are asking for the deceleration. So you can literally give the positive value. Or if you write the acceleration, you can give it as a negative value. All right. So we're going to find the gradient. Let's use the M is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we can indicate that we want this one to be X1, Y1. This one to be X2, Y2. Or it can be the other way around. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So 12 minus 0 over 4.5 minus 7. We get in. The reason we get in a negative answer is because they're decelerating. Sh shout out to natural butte. So what I'm going to do is bring up my calculator. It's in the back here somewhere. And we are working out 12 minus 0 over 4.5 minus 7. So we get this value. I'm writing it back. Negative 24 is over 5. This is in meters per second square. So that's the unit that we use it. This is if you are dealing with um, acceleration. But if you're talking deceleration, you just use the positive value because it will be redundant to say deceleration and give the negative value. Think about it. You are decelerating at a rate of this. Therefore, the deceleration, or I can put decelerating at, and did they ask for decimal places? Let's just check. Um, negative 24.5, we can always switch negative 4.8. Decelerating at 4.8 meters per second squared. The constant deceleration, they ask for it like that, so we save. So we're going to do the last part. We're going to do the last part of the question monty's average speed over the seven seconds so 
Beyond that, we are asked to find his average speed over the whole seven seconds. Anybody with ideas of how we're going to do this? How are we going to find his average speed? So I'm trying to get some space in the, set, in the corner here to, to deal with it. So we get his average speed by finding the total distance he traveled and dividing by time. Average speed, let's get this. Average speed is distance over time. Now this begs the question, how are we going to find out the distance? Are you seeing the distance here? How are we going to get this total distance he traveled over the seven seconds? Well, this is another, there's another characteristic that you learn in maths about speed time graphs. If you want to find the total distance and somebody in the chat may say just now, it's the area under the graph. Well done, Michelle. So we find the total distance by the area under the graph. So this is a trapezium. And no, we're going to have a lot of people who are going to split it up into two shapes because they forget the formula for the trapezium, even though it's right in front of the, um, the maths paper. So the area, distance equal area under graph, which is equal to half the sum of the parallel sides. That's how we find the area of our trapezium. And we multiply by the perpendicular height between the sides. So the, this side is 4.5. See in that? Make sure everything is on the proper units, meters per second. This isn't, oh, they did put seconds, so I was wrong. They did put the seconds, and this is seven. So, and the height between it is 12. The perpendicular height between the sides is 12. So, the, my next line where I'm substituting, I would write half of 4.5 plus 7 multiplied by 12. And I will let the calculator do the talking for that. Let's get you down a little smaller. Half of 4.5. So half is 0 0.5 times 4.5 plus 7 is 11.5. Half of 11.5 multiplied by 12. So we get 69. So the distance is 69 meters. And finally, average speed, back to average speed now, would be 69 over the whole time. It takes 7 seconds over 7. And that answer is 9.86. Three significant figures. Sounds nice to me. And since we're dealing with speed meters per second, this is two, three significant figures. I'm generally live every day from 11 o'clock, except on Saturdays, I'll be live in the afternoon. And I, I don't think I'll be live on Sundays, but every weekday during 11 o'clock, I'll be here doing some questions. So you could always jump in for a little, a little revision. Maybe we'll have somebody who was in all of the live sessions and we can find some way to reward you for being in all of the live sessions. So that's it for today. The next time we come back on maybe Monday and we will be continuing our series with the fast people that went by. I'll be doing this question here, the circle geometry question. You can have a look at it. Come back to this video, have a look at it. And we'll see. I'll try to maybe cover the entire circle geometry question in that so that monday session is going to be hot so see you monday around 11 a.m love and blessings